So you're the state treasurer in West Virginia, and you know you, your work has come to my attention because you're taking a unique or leading approach in terms of how you deal with ESG policy um, coming in from large companies that, that function within West Virginia. So let's talk about this. ESG is, to me, one of the scariest movements that we have going on in this country. And for us here in West Virginia, obviously, it is something that would ultimately destroy our economy, our people, and our way of life. Um, ESG, environment, social governance, standards that are out there. Uh, for us, the E is the most near-term immediate threat um, because it's the rapid transition to green energy. We are a fossil fuel state in West Virginia. And what they're doing, it's, it's happening across all facets of the financial services sector. So the asset managers, the rating agencies, the banks, they're all coordinated in this effort. So. For instance, you have rating agencies that are giving ESG scores out to states and municipalities as it relates to their environment, social standards, and governance. Uh, you have banks that have adopted ESG policies that uh, have prohibitions on lending to the fossil fuel industry, coal, gas, and oil. You have the asset managers that are pushing capital away from these very important industries like coal, gas, and oil that are also uh, espousing this very left-wing social policies and standards such as diversity, equity, and inclusion, for instance. So, but it really boils down to, I mean, the thrust here, where they're able to make their mark is in the energy space because of this coercion of capital that they're pushing through their ESG ratings, standards, and guidelines for investment. So it is something that is affecting everybody in this country, by the way. It's like, well, who's part of this? Everybody. Your 401k, your pension plan. They're using your money to push their goals. And people need to wake up to this and figure out exactly what they're invested in, whether it's State Street or Vanguard or BlackRock. If you're in one of those funds, you're likely helping fund this entire ESG movement. On the surface, right, ESG sounds kind of attractive, right? You know, if there's these, um, you know, greedy capitalists that, you know, focus everything on just making money, you know, the environment be damned, the social realities be damned, governance be damned. So, you know, why not have these guidelines to, you know, benevolently, um, you know, try to get corporations to do good? So what we have here really is a collusion of corporate power and left-wing ideology that has manifested itself in the form of ESG. So ESG is, at the end of the day, I mean, these publicly traded companies have a duty to their shareholders, right? But they're not talking about shareholders now. They're talking about stakeholders, disparate groups and organizations that somehow have some influence over the way that they're going to invest their dollars. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, they're going to end up having some level of monopolistic power in the ability to shape society uh, as it relates to the moral and policy questions of this country through the power of their capital. you got to remember, State Street, Vanguard, and BlackRock uh, combined have $20 trillion assets under management that's larger than the GDP of the entire United States, larger than anybody else in the world, right? More money than anybody. And so, sure, yeah, we want uh, the environment clean and, uh, you know, staying up for human rights surely sounds like a nice thing. But shouldn't that be things that are left to policymakers to debate? Should it not? I mean, look, we live in a constitutional republic here in the United States. So are we going to cede our ability to solve these problems at the ballot box, or are we going to allow a bunch of corporate oligarchs to make these decisions for us? Now, I think it should certainly be the former, not the latter, and that's why I'm in this fight. Before we continue, I just have a message from one of our sponsors. For all of you with retirement savings accounts, America's federal debt is now at $30 trillion, and our policies during this pandemic are causing inflation to soar to multi-decade highs. A lot of folks are rightly worried about what this will mean for their retirement savings. 
You can protect your life savings with the only thing that has always held value, physical gold and silver. To get started, you can call Gold Co. at 855-973-0470 for a free wealth protection kit. They have an a rating with the Better Business Bureau. They guarantee highest price buybacks, and they always offer free shipping. Ask how you can even get $10,000 or more in free silver. Don't wait. Call 855-973-0470. Now that's 855-973-0470. So, you know, there's one example that just comes to my mind, which maybe is illustrative to some extent, and that is Tesla, right? When um, Elon Musk gets involved in buying Twitter, starts talking about, you know, reducing censorship on Twitter, creates a firestorm. A lot of people, you know, a lot of the Twitter staff are panicking for some reason. Um, and around the same time, Tesla's ESG score somehow drops, as I understand it. Yes. So, 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 w- did you notice that? What do you make of oh, that? Of course, I noticed it. And so, S and P uh, dropped them from their S and P ESG ETF that they had out there. Tesla's out. Exxon's still in. Exxon Mobil, apparently, that's okay. Um, if you don't think this is political, it's very obviously political, right? Now, ExxonMobil, though, by uh, background, just people need to understand, BlackRock is a major shareholder in ExxonMobil. Last year, they were able to push a vote on the board that re- they voted to reduce oil production by 20% last year and increase uh, investment in green energy by 20%. Certainly probably could have used that oil production right about now uh, as we're in an energy crisis, which an energy crisis of their making as they've diverted and coerced capital away from investment in the fossil fuel industry. But that is why you know that this is not real. These, I mean, to take Tesla off of the S&P ESG uh, ETF, I mean, what are we talking about here, right? So you know it's political. It's driven by political agendas. And that was a very, very... A uh, clear example there as it relates to Tesla. I mean, effectively, it allows these massive, admittedly, player, corporate players to kind of exercise power outside of the bounds of their fiduciary responsibility. Would you would you describe it that way? Oh, yeah, I'd certainly describe it that way. I mean, look, we have these things, uh, I'll give you an example, like in pension funds that are called pecuniary factors, right? Risk and return. Those are the things that they should solely be taking under consideration, but it's not. They have things such as social risk and environmental risk. And I mean, people need to ask the question at the end of the day, uh, how do greenhouse gas emissions affect the uh, maximization of return on someone's pension plan for that beneficiary? 